Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. Today we're going to talk a lot about uh, electrochemistry and its different applications. We're going to start with electrometallurgy, where we can refine ores from the ground uh, using electrochemistry, and uh, electrorefining, where we actually purify metals using electrochemistry, talk about a couple of different types of fuel cells, and we'll talk about how we can actually measure equilibrium constants by using electrochemical cells. Well, the first example is magnesium, and it turns out that um, we can recover magnesium from magnesium chloride. Uh, in the United States, this is done uh, from the Great Salt Lake uh, by a company called U.S. Magnesium, and it turns out that a mixture of magnesium chloride, sodium chloride, and calcium chloride can be molten or melted at 750 degrees Celsius in the absence of water, and then we can electrochemically convert the magnesium chloride into magnesium metal which floats to the top above um, the uh, cathode, and chlorine gas, which floats to the top uh, above the anode. The purity of the metal, which is uh, produced by this way, is about 99.9%, .9 and U.S. magnesium makes about 50,000 metric tons of magnesium each year. It takes about 15 kilowatt hours of electricity to produce one kilogram of magnesium metal, and that includes uh, losses due to heating necessary to keep the salts hot and melted. Um, and uh, so that represents about 30% more or less of the total cost of making the magnesium from the salt. On a much grander scale, we can make aluminum from aluminum oxide. Uh, aluminum oxide is purified from the ore, which is called bauxite, using something called the Bayer process. But uh, Hall and Hero uh, invented a way of electrochemically then converting the aluminum oxide to molten aluminum. And uh, so in this device at the cathode, uh, aluminum oxide is reduced to molten aluminum and that sinks to the bottom where it's tapped uh, off. Um, and the, uh, at the anode, the oxide from the aluminum oxide is converted uh, with the carbon uh, from the graphite electrode into carbon dioxide. The secret of this process is that aluminum oxide is an extremely high temperature material, but it dissolves in cryolite, which is sodium aluminum fluoride. And so that dissolving process allows the um, sy uh, system to become liquid uh, at a relatively mild temperature of 950 Celsius and allows this electrochemistry to occur. About 9 billion pounds of aluminum is produced in the U.S. Um, by this electrochemical process each year. We can also talk about electro-refining, and copper is a good example. Uh, copper ore is largely copper sulfide, and um, that can be uh, reacted with oxygen to produce copper metal in things called mats, which are about 99% pure. We can stick those mats into a solution of copper sulfate, and by running a current uh, between the anode and the cathode, we can then oxidize the copper from the copper mat to copper 2 plus ions, and then reduce them again to copper metal at the cathode. And while that doesn't do very much for the copper, what it does is um, it isolates copper from many different metals which are produced in the smelting process. So less active metals like silver, gold, lead, and antimony are not oxidized because copper is more easily, easily oxidized, and that produces something called anode slime, which simply drops to the bottom of the tank and can be separated. More active metals like nickel, arsenic, um, iron and cobalt are um, oxidized into the copper sulfate solution, but they are not as easily reduced at the cathode, and so they actually remain dissolved in the copper sulfate solution. And so we can get a variety of different metals separated from the copper by this very selective oxidation and reduction process called electrofining, electrorefining. Fuel cells are similar to voltaic cells, uh, except that uh, you have a continuous flow of oxidizer and fuel to produce electricity. The hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell is the most common type, and uh, you can see the half reactions that occur here at the anode and the cathode. The net reaction is the conversion of hydrogen and oxygen gas to water, and that has an overall cell potential of 1.229 volts under standard conditions. And this is a very green technology because uh, you're starting with hydrogen and oxygen and you're producing water uh, at a 
a very low temperature, essentially room temperature, and not producing any carbon dioxide or any other uh, pollutants. So you'll see in the future that cars will run on this very clean uh, fuel cell technology. Uh, there are also ways of constructing fuel cells for uh, other types of fuels. In the, this is a picture of a methanol fuel cell where methanol is converted to CO2 and oxygen is reduced to water. And the overall redu uh, reaction is methanol plus oxygen goes to CO2 plus water. These methanol fuel cells have a much higher energy density than hydrogen oxygen fuel cells because you can store methanol as a liquid instead of a gas. But they're much less efficient and they require fairly expensive catalysts uh, to run. So. Uh, the technology hasn't really been developed. Also, uh, this overall reaction produces CO2, which is a greenhouse gas, so it's not quite as green technology as the hydrogen-oxygen fuel cell. Finally, we can see how equilibrium measurements can be made by uh, constructing two half cells and measuring a voltage between them. Here I have shown on the left hand side the silver silver chloride reference cell in one mole per liter uh, potassium chloride and on the right hand side the silver silver ion uh, cell in silver, uh, aqueous silver nitrate. We connect them uh, the two cells together with a uh, salt bridge across an electrolyte and uh, then can measure the potential difference between the wires. And when we do that under standard conditions we get a measured cell potential of minus 0.5773 volts. Now we know that the cell potential is related to the Gibbs free energy which is in turn related to the um, equilibrium constant and so we can actually calculate the equilibrium constant from the measured cell potential and in this case it's 1.74 times 10 to the minus 10. And so that's a way of actually using electrochemistry to indirectly measure equilibrium constants from two half reactions without having to measure very, very small concentrations of silver ions and chloride ions uh, for this overall solubility product reaction of silver chloride going to silver ions and chloride ions in aqueous solution. Now, pH electrode is an interesting application of uh, electrodes. This is a specific type of ion selective electrode, in fact, the most common type. And it turns out that if you have a reference solution of acid inside the electrode and uh, you put the electrode a, a glass membrane into a, an aqueous solution with an unknown concentration of hydronium ions, uh, the half reaction at that glass electrode produces a potential which is um, related to the Nernst uh, equation uh, for the ratio of the hydronium ion concentration in the solution you want to measure compared with the reference solution inside. And um, uh, of course you need uh, a counter uh, electrode and usually the silver silver chloride reference electrode is used but it, because that produces a nice stable uh, half reaction. And so uh, you can measure the overall potential, subtract out the uh, silver silver ion or silver silver chloride reference potential and what you get is um, the potential that's created by the hydronium ions across this glass membrane. So next time we'll talk about coordination chemistry and some of the properties of transition metals. See you then.